Hey guys, so welcome back to the next video in our tutorial series on Azure Service Fabric. In the last video, we looked at how stateless services run on a single node cluster. In this video, we're going to look at how these stateless services run on a multi node cluster. In this case, we're going to simulate a five node cluster on our local machine. This means we'll be running multiple replicas, i.e., multiple identical instances of our stateless application in our cluster. This means that when one of our replicas fails, another replica will be able to take over and we will achieve high availability. As our services are stateless, we don't have to worry about passing state between our replicas and keeping state the same. We'll have a look at how this works with stateful services in a future video. So the first thing we want to do is we want to change our local cluster to be running in a five node configuration. And this is quite easy to do. So all we have to do is right click on the service fabric symbol in our taskbar and change our cluster mode from one node to five nodes. This will reset our cluster and it will start it in a five node configuration. So before we do that, we're just going to delete the application of our single node cluster. In order to do that, we can click on our application here, not the application type and click delete application you need to delete the application before you can delete the application type. So we just copy that here and paste it in here and that will allow us to delete our application. We just need to wait a few seconds for our application to delete and then we can delete the application type. Again, we follow the same procedure, just copy in what it says and click on provision type. So now once again, we have no applications and no services running in our cluster. So we can go ahead and switch to a five node cluster. So we want to click yes to this warning message. It's just saying we're going to remove our existing cluster and replace it with a five node cluster, which is exactly what we want to do. And this process might take a couple of minutes. Service Fabric will let you know when it's finished. Okay, so the Service Fabric local cluster manager has now informed us that we've successfully switched to a five node local cluster, which is good news. We can see here now that in our node section, we no longer just have node zero. We have node zero, one, two, three, and four. So these are our five nodes. They've just gone out of error state because the service fabric was still booting those nodes up. We can see that three of those nodes are seed nodes. These seed nodes are the nodes that are at the core of a service fabric cluster. And these seed nodes run the core systems used by service fabric. And these are the systems down here. So the cluster manager service, the DNS service, the event store service, etc., will all be placed on these seed nodes. So next we want to jump back into Visual Studio. So we click into Visual Studio and we still have our first stateless service here. And this is exactly what we're going to use for this tutorial. So in order to make things a little bit more interesting, we're going to change the string that our our logger or our service event source is printing out. At the moment, we're just printing out the number of iterations in our while loop. So we'll change that and we'll use this notation, which allows us to put variables inside our string. So we will say the same thing. We'll say working and the iteration number. So, but also we're going to just print out the replica ID or the instance ID that the service is currently running on. So we can access that with service context and we want to go to instance ID and that will give us the ID that the service is running on. So we can delete the rest of this. We want to leave in that iterations plus plus those are the number increments. When we run this service, the service will pick up its settings from our application parameters files. So at the moment, you can see we've got a number of different application parameters files. And these are very important because these configure how our service fabric application and thus our service fabric services will run in a particular environment. So if we click our local one node, which is what we were previously running before, we can see the settings here. And we can see that the first stateless service has an instance count of one. So this means that we only want to run a single instance or a single replica of our service. And this is because in a one node cluster, we only have one node. So it only makes sense to run a single instance of the service. In our five node cluster, we have an instance count of one as well, but we can overwrite this if we want more instances. 
So for instance, if we set it to three, we'll see three instances of our service start. And these settings will be imported to our application manifest. So up here, we can see that the first stateless service instance count is default minus one. And minus one here means that the service will be put on every node in our cluster. If we didn't overwrite this value in an environment specific XML file, we would simply use the default value of minus one. So here they are being overwritten. So we will be importing the value from our local five node file, which is three. So we'll expect the service to only run on three nodes. But if we had left this out, we would expect the service to run on all five nodes as we had specified minus one in the application manifest. And then this value is then used down here in the default services section of the application manifest. And it's passed into this instant count, which basically tells Service Fabric how many instances of the service we want to run. So let's try running this service the same way we did last time and see what happens. So we right click on our application, debug and start new instance. And then we'll go back to our Service Fabric cluster manager to see what happens. So back in our Service Fabric Explorer, we can see that the new service application type has again appeared as we've redeployed the application. We can see that we have our application and we have our service inside our application. And again, it's a stateless service, so we'll only have a single partition. But if we click on the partition, we can see that we actually have three replicas of that running. We have a replica running on node one with the instance ID ending in seven two, on node three with the instance ID ending in seven one, and on node four with the instance ID ending in 70. And if we go back to our diagnostic events in Visual Studio, we can look at our logging and we can see that as we expected, we can see three services running in parallel. So they're all printing 90, 91, 93, and the same instance IDs that we saw before, 70, 71, and 72. So let's go back to our Service Fabric Cluster Manager and let's cause a little bit of chaos and we'll see what happens. So what happens if we simulate one of our nodes going down? So we have this service running on three nodes, node one, node three, and node four. So the Service Fabric Service Explorer lets us restart nodes dynamically here. So for instance, node four, we know node four has one of these partitions running on it that ends in 70. So let's kill node four and let's have a little look what happens. So we'll restart node four. We just again copy this into the input here and click restart. And that should restart the whole node, which includes restarting all the services that are running on that particular node. So we just wait for a little minute and we should see node four go into error state as it kicks through a restart. And we've seen the node four just disappear there. And Service Fabric has redeployed the application again on node four. But if we go back and we look at our diagnostics event, we can see that one of the numbers is now much smaller. So seven, four is now on eight, nine, 11, while the other two instances of our service are much higher. And this is because this is a stateless service and it doesn't keep track between restarts of the service on what value was held in that variable that we called iterations. We would have that option in a stateful service, which we'll look at again in a future video. And as expected, the, the instance ID of the new service ends in 7.4, and so does this here. So ends in 7.4, we can see that the much smaller node is ending in 74. I appreciate this it might be flashing by a little bit too quickly for you to notice. So let's try restart node zero and see what happens. So we see we have an instance ending in 4.1 running on node zero. So let's restart that node. And that node is being restarted. And we can see now that that node is gone into, uh, that node has been restarted and Service Fabric has repositioned one of the replicas of our stateless service on a healthy node. So this here used to read node zero, but Service Fabric has recognized that that node has gone down and has repositioned our instance of the service from node zero 
to node 2. So this used to be an instance ID ending in 41. We've booted up a new instance on node 2, and that ends in 39. So if we go back again to our Visual Studio, we'll take a, just a quick screenshot here so you don't have to watch it go by just so quick. We can see here that the node that we looked at, which ended in 39, will be on a much lower number than the other nodes. So 39 here is on 27, while the other nodes are on 364 and 184. So these have been running for a longer time, while this one has only been running for a short period of time. So that is the core of how a stateless service works in Service Fabric. We can use anything with our stateless service. So in our stateless service run async, we can run any sort of task we want in the background, any long running or short running task we can run here and we can cancel it using the cancellation token. In a future video, we'll look at how we can communicate with stateless services using this method here and the service fabric remoting, which is very interesting and one of the core uses of service fabric, allowing services to talk to each other. And in future videos, we'll also start looking at stateful services and what the difference between a stateful and a stateless service is. So thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. See you next time.